So we are away. Um, I was gonna go for this wreck up here, but this guy looks like he's headed in that direction. So instead, I think we'll focus on um, one of these other closer wrecks. So again, lead our cross, set our berry, and then we'll hit off. Again, we still got plenty of remass, so we're not in danger of any issues there. And again, see what we can do in terms of organization. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uninstall... Oh no, that's the regulator, never mind. I... I... Why was it not selecting the regulator before? That's weird. But we may have the parts that we need to repair this regulator, so I'm gonna see if we can do that while we're moving. Is that it? That's it? Hey, how about that? We can actually repair this. So it is gonna take a little while, and I was gonna say, we're, we're probably gonna we're gonna get to the other ship before we finish, but at least we know we can repair that now. So let's bleed some speed. And we will select our docking targets. Come on, baby, let this be a big one. Let this be the luxury yacht that we've always wanted. Hey, I said clamp. Why didn't you clamp? We kind of bounced off the ship here, because for whatever reason, it did not engage. Like, I clicked the button, but it didn't actually dock us. That's that's weird. I've never had that problem before. But that's okay. We are now docked with the Nuclear Vandal. That's a hell of a name. Well, let's see what the Nuclear Vandal has got for us. It certainly got a bitchin' name. I, I know that. Oh. Oh, look at that. We got some fancy floor tiles here. This is, like, this type of floor tiles and stuff has got, like, that kind of retro, almost like aliens type of thing, where it's, like, what people thought the future would be like in the 70s. So we have a door. It's not damaged, though, so what we can actually do is we can uninstall this door. It's not powered, but we can actually take it off the hinges, and that's going to take a little while. But that will give us access to the ship. Hopefully we can finish taking the door off before we start to get hypercadmia. Okay. And the ship is, again, looking like it's in relatively good shape. So that's good news. Pop off the helmet. And actually, while I'm at it, I just realized that we got a few more parts in our backpack from when we were... Or when we were repairing the um thruster so we'll get right back in there see what we managed to find for ourselves so right away bins and i see crates as well which is good news crates could mean cargo or patches what do we got in this crate nothing nothing oh hold on Right there, we got ourselves an EVA battery. That's good. Doesn't have much charge in it, but it saves us having to pay for one. Um, so, nothing necessarily wrong with these crates. We could potentially use them to, to store some parts. So, the crate has an interior space of 3x3, three three, whereas its physical footprint is only 2x2. Two so crates are actually good for storing a lot of small parts and stuff, and since we have a lot of small parts on the ship, might not be a bad idea to grab another one. 
But again, we're going to have to do the same thing that we did. I don't think, yeah, it's not going to work. So we're going to have to uninstall this door as well, which is unfortunate. But thankfully, the doors are not damaged. They're not broken. So we can remove them successfully. The thing is really killing me, though, is not having a crowbar. And I really should have bought one when we went back to Kaleg, but uh, live and learn. If we go back again, I'll try to remember to pick up a crowbar, because that's... That is inhibiting our ability to do our job as a salvage technician. Let me see, where in here do I even have space to drop a crate, though, is the question. I guess I could put it, like, right here. Alright. Let's... Okay, I thought we were about to get bumped again. Okay, so we are going to... Oh, look! Another EVA battery! Good lord! So I'm going to pick up this crate, and we are going to drag it back over to the ship. And then I'm going to use this crate to store all of our small mechanical parts, motors, things like that. So we can get that stuff up off the floor. Organization is key. Or as they say in the military, cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, they don't just say it in the military, but... Alright. So now we've got ourselves a crate. In fact, we could probably grab another one. Stick it right here. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. But we still got a whole ship to explore, and I'm over here worried about where I'm going to stick my electrical bits. That's what she said. So let's get into the rest of the ship and see what we got here. I might be organizing when this might be our second home. Got empty drink pouches, nothing in that bin. Got some food just randomly sitting on the floor, kind of strange. Trash in that bin. More drinks in that one. Uh, vodka? Is there anything in the bottle, though, is the question. Ah, somebody put coffee in a vodka bottle. Yeah, astronauts, the search for grains. Ah, uh, we got some conduit, we got a welder here, but I've already got a welder and it's in good shape, so I don't think we need that one. Ah, uh, just more junk on the floor. What is that? That's an air pump. Got another door. God, I need a crowbar. My, my life for a crowbar. Good lord. Thankfully, some of these doors are open. Okay, so we got a decent battery bank here. If we've got that, then part of me thinks there might be a reactor on this ship. We'll have to see. Nothing in these bins, but we'll, we'll continue the search. Toolbox, anything in it? Probably not. Nope. Pill bottles? Any pills? No pills. Fire extinguisher, patch kit. So well, there's more ship up here, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of ship left. We are going to have to uninstall another door to get to it, though. And I guess, what, this is destroyed? Whatever that is. Okay, so we'll head back to the ship. Refresh our oxygen. And then I'm going to try to take down that last door, and get one of those doors, and see what's in that last section of the ship. And while we're at it, we can just dump some of this stuff. So that's carbon fiber. And I guess I can drop to EVA batteries for right now. Don't really need those at the moment. I'm also hoping we can find a real honest-to-god backpack instead of this... I were basically carrying around a, a swag bag like we're at an anime convention. Alright. Uninstall the door. And this is, this is it. This is where we're going to find the solid gold bars and all the EVA suits and assault rifles and th this is it. All the good stuff is going to be in this room. Well, 
that, you know... I wasn't entirely wrong. So this is a reactor room, although it looks like most of the reactor components are missing, the reactor itself included, which is unfortunate, but... One thing that is here, two things that are here actually, are these puppies right here. These are Hydra's, Hydra regulators, and they are worth quite a bit of money. So we've already got a sick stomach from Hypercapnia because... It turns out that Alvin is actually just a giant wuss and a crybaby. No, that's not true. The, the real issue is that I'm not giving him enough time to actually breathe oxygen before sticking the helmet back on. So I'm actually going to give him a minute here. I think we'll, we'll do some work on the ship real quick while we wait. I just want him to um, get some oxygen in his blood. So this will be a good opportunity for us to fix this regulator. But the Hydra regulators are actually worth a lot of money. And finding two of them intact is a huge bone for us. So 100%, I'm going to be taking both of those. So there we go. We have now fixed the regulator. Which, at this point, all we need to do is fix the... Well, I thought we fixed the regulator. But apparently we didn't, so we'll fix it again? Question mark? Is it actually fixed this time? It is actually fixed this time. Kind of everything is good. Ish. So yeah, now we've got a little more thrust. That's good news. Uh, so, next order of business is hopefully our, our boy Alvin here is actually oxygenated enough. And we'll stop complaining about hypercapnia long enough for us to get in here and remove these hydras. Now there's also a tank. I didn't see, is this the deuterium? No, this is the helium tank. So the helium tanks aren't worth a whole lot, but it, if we can fit it on the ship, it still might be worth taking. Just for the money. My man, you, you have got to learn to survive in space, my brother. Alright, so let's grab this Hydra and then we're hauling it back. If I remember right, these things are worth like 20 or 30 K or something like that. Like, they're worth a lot of money. Relative to what they are. Now, with that being said, this thing is actually extremely efficient in terms of thrusters. Because one of these is worth like four of the other regular thrusters that you use. And it's in a very small package, so... It's a really good thruster regulator for sure. But I'm always surprised at exactly how much money the game will give you for them. Alright, hell it back on, let's go get that other Hydra. There was that part of me that very briefly considered moving into this ship. Because it is in good condition for what it is, but... Again, for right now, I think we'll just focus on making the best of what we have. Let's see. So, the liquid helium tanister doesn't have anything in it, but it isn't completely damaged. So yeah, if we can fit it on the ship, I definitely want to try. I don't think we're going to have enough space. We will see. Take your time, Alvin. You're not suffocating or anything. One thing I do wish that they would add as a quality of life improvement is a way to take your helmet on or off um, with like a hotkey or something. Or alternately, I would be okay with 
like um like having a visor that you can flip up or down to open the helmet that way i think that would be a useful feature and that's like to me that's one of the kind of annoying things about the the having to constantly with the pressure suit at least having to constantly put the helmet on take the helmet off put the helmet on take the helmet off But I think it also adds more value to the EVA suit when you finally get one put together and working, because then you don't have to mess with that. Yeah, that would work too. If, if they could handle it automatically, that would be even better. But again, the, the developers of this game, Blue Bottle Games, are already well known for their kind of like, yes, this is annoying, but it's annoying on purpose kind of thing. Like they did a lot of the same thing with Neo Scavenger. Um, so I, like, I can appreciate it. It's, it's artistic vision. And obviously it's not going to work for everybody. Not everybody's going to like it. And you could level the same argument at Dark Souls. Not everybody likes, uh, getting pounded in the cornhole by a giant dragon. Uh, Akira Eldritch being thing, but you know, some people like it, and the game is for people that like it, not for people that don't. All right, so we are able to fit this in here, which is outstanding news. And the first thing we're gonna do is restore these so that we can get a little more value from them when we sell them, and we're not. Wait, oh yeah, we've still got plenty of time on the license in our pocket. So I think we can hit one more derelict and then we'll have to head back um, to sell these before the license runs out. And there we go. So yeah, let's let's hit one more derelict and see if we can find get stuff. Yeah, I, I'm aware. Why are you griping at me about RCS? Alright, disengage a clamp. And we've already got some wrecks in close proximity, which is good. Oh, that's the wrong way. I want to go this direction. I'm also a little bit confused because we suddenly have over a thousand remass. And I have not added any tanks to the ship. So I'm a little bit confused about where all the extra remass came from. Not that I'm complaining. It's just... I don't remember adding anything to give us the additional remass. Alright. Back with this new boy here, and we need to bleed some speed before we run into it. Ah. And our cross is good, our bearing is good. Should be slow and steady. There we go. I must see, this is the host code, a freighter, which could be good news for us. Maybe a larger ship? Maybe a ship with a bunch of cargo? Won't know until we get in there and find out. And so right away we get a flashlight. Um, you know what? Yeah, you're not gonna Can I scrap the door? Ah, nice, nice, nice. So I don't think you used to be able to scrap things without a crowbar, but it looks like they've changed it so that you can. So I can go ahead and scrap this damaged door to get it out of the way. Which is good for us. Um, double check the floor right here at the door. Nothing, nothing good, but we do have a crate. With nothing in it. A little bathroom, some junk on the floor. We got a bin with trash in it. Good find. 
uh, where we get, oh, clobbered by the memory of a love now lost. It is one of the random events that pops up. I'm not 100% sure what that does or if it serves a purpose. Oh yeah, no, Hive, High Fleet is one of those, like, don't get me wrong, I love High Fleet for what it tries to do, but on the flip side, if you want to talk about impenetrable like that, that's a game that says, oh, you don't get it? Go F yourself. Bash your head against the wall until you do. I, I am lost count of the number of videos and tutorials that I watched before I finally... Before I finally felt like I understood High Fleet enough to not suck at it completely. So we definitely have crates. And it definitely looks like a lot of these crates are probably going to be empty. But we have a lot of crates. In fact, this one is locked. So can I access the lock? And we will hack the pin for the crate. And this is why hacking is super useful. Because we wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. We would have to pry this open, which as previously stated is going to be a little bit of an issue. So we have a sweatshirt. It's in really good condition, but we don't really need a shirt at the moment. And Alvin is complaining about Hypercapnia again. Because really, he's just a giant baby. So we'll go back to the ship before he suffocates. Yeah, so if it wasn't if it wasn't clear from my choice of games, um I am a big fan of like space games and like salvaging games, like cozy type of things and any kind of like if it's got ships in it flying ships, spaceships, or just regular boats. Like, I, I, I got a little bit of a thing for it. I like chunky sci-fi. If that wasn't painfully obvious at this point. Hey, look at that. Another, another EVA suit, which I will definitely take. Pressure suit helmet that isn't completely screwed. Uh, we got more antibiotics, it looks like. That's, that's some good gets. That's some good gets right there. See what else we have. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, again, the, the game High Fleet is, is kind of impenetrable, and it's that way on purpose. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less from a Russian developer who probably hadn't seen daylight in 10 years. Like, there's... There's a certain mentality amongst the Russian people, and I know we're not supposed to talk about Russians in any kind of favorable terms because of things going on in the world, but, like, the Russian people have a very interesting outlook on life, and if you ever, ever want to know what Russian game dev is like, Go look at anything that Nikita has said, the, the, the head of the studio, Battlestate Games, that makes es Escape from Tarkov. Like, a guy that has gone on record multiple times is saying, Tarkov isn't about fun, it's about suffering. And that's... It's very reminiscent of just Russian game dev as a whole, um, where... Enjoying the experience is often not the point. And it reminds me a lot of Russian literature in that regard, where, you know, people people often criticize Russian literature for being very dour and negative and kind of, you know, it's that doomer mentality. But again, that's just that's just part of the Russian zeitgeist. You know, it's it's just part of the way that 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 group of people thinks and the way that they approach the world in fiction and it reflects in what they produce and so to me high fleet is exactly what i would expect from a russian developer it's it's a game that's all about exactly what russians are used to you know that the allegory for the war in afghanistan is is painfully obvious 
Uh, and it has a lot of that sentiment to it because in much the same way that here in the U.S., there were a lot of people back in the early 2000s that were like, oh, we should just nuke the entire Middle East because we're mad about a thing that they did. Like, there were a lot of people in Russia back in the 80s and 90s during their war in Afghanistan that were kind of of the same mindset. They were like, you know, w we have nukes. Why are we fighting these guys in a ground war when we could end this in 10 seconds? Um, so, yeah, it's... It's, it's, I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's also not good. But well, I guess it, it's, suffice it to say, High Fleet is everything I thought a Russian game developer would produce. Well, hey, look at that, a bedroll. Well, we don't have one of those yet, and that will definitely be useful. It's, uh, it's in pretty crappy condition, but we can repair it. And I see some junk out here, but there's nothing really to worry about there. Tell you what, though, if this, if this battery... This battery is about to break. I'm going to restore it. And the reason I'm going to restore this battery is because it has a full charge. So if we can repair this thing, I can actually take the damaged battery out of our ship currently and replace it with this one. Because we still have one battery in the ship that's damaged. So I can repair this one and it's going to kill some of the charge on the battery and that's fine. But that will allow us to get our free finger battery complement. And generally speaking, uh, the the meta is you always want to have four batteries on your ship, no more, no less, uh, because four batteries is the maximum number that you can. Um, I think I'm just gonna bash this. I can't. Damn it. Um, but four batteries is the maximum number of batteries that you can charge with a reactor. And so, yeah, again, most, most meta will tell you always four batteries. Even though we're never going to be able to put a reactor on this ship, I don't think. Okay, so, now that we've done that, I'm going to... Grab this battery. And we'll put our helmet back on. Drag this big sucker off of here. And replace it with the one that we just restored. There we go. Now, where is that battery? Oh, crap. I just realized there's more bins and crates that I haven't that I haven't checked yet. Seems like every time I think I'm done with this ship, it keeps drawing me back in. Unfortunately, batteries take a long time to install and uninstall with the default tools. If we had the laser torch, this would be a lot faster. I'm not sure what it is about the laser torch that makes it go so much faster, but... If only we had... $18,000 to buy one. Yeah, the, the laser torch... And you, you do occasionally get really lucky and find one out in the derelict somewhere but yeah the laser torch is the tits because it's it basically replaces like three quarters of the tools that you use now now, now i wanted to install uh install area and we want this i think it's this way yeah that's the way the rest of the batteries are installed That's another thing, like a quality of life thing that I wish they would implement, and I have actually suggested it before, uh, is whenever you go to install a battery, there's the plug, which in the game's UI means that you should be plugging it into the power. And then on the other side, it has the little lightning bolt, which technically is like, yeah, okay, that's electricity, but it could mean anything. 
And so, like, I wish they would change that symbol from a lightning bolt to, like, an on-off symbol or something to, to make it more clear that that's where the switch is supposed to go. Instead of... Because it can sometimes be confusing if you're not paying attention. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't always pay attention. Ah, uh, let's see. We got another battery with 100% charge, but it's in 19% um, condition. But that's okay. You can still make it work. Oh my, we got a lot of crates out here. Okay, so it's a good thing I didn't I didn't leave it behind. Just, oh my good lord Jesus. Thank you, sweet baby Christ. We found a backpack. It's 50% condition, but I'll take it. So we're going to do this, and we're going to flip this around. And our AO is going to go right here, and we are going to put on a real honest-to-god backpack. Finally. Finally. Good get. Good get. I am glad we checked this side of the ship. Alright, so we're gonna hack the code on this one as well. We never did find the, um... Uh, never did find the control panel for this thing, so I think it's been destroyed. Whoa, 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 where are you going? What are you doing? I... Okay, I don't even know where we were now. Hey, stop it, would you? Hold on. Tasks. What the hell? Yeah, okay, I have no idea how those tasks got queued up. That's really weird. Uh, let's see, we got another saw, we had a short sleeve. I mean, technically it's supposed to be wear and tear, but yeah, it does look an awful lot like blood. But hey, don't blame me. I didn't, uh... I, I didn't kill anyone attached to this, so it's not my fault. Besides, maybe, maybe whoever had this backpack before us just really, really liked ketchup. Like, a bunch. Or maybe it's hot sauce. You know, I, I hear that space food is kind of bland. And, you know, they just wanted to hit it with some, with some sauce. Oh, it's unlike. I, I'm sitting here accessing a lot. This is what I mean when I say I don't pay attention. Like, I'm accessing the lock to hack a crate that's already unlocked. Hey, look at that, a handgun? Not gonna say no to that. How does, is there any vodka in this vodka bottle? No, there's water in it though. Ah, uh, let's see, what about this one? That's the one we just checked. What about this one? There's a motor, which we don't really need. And yeah, I know we're suffering from hypercapnia right now, but, uh, I want to go ahead and finish up these these crates because I think this is the last thing we need. Uh, this is about the last thing left to loot and then we're going to get the hell out of here. Wow, look at that. Another backpack. Uh, unfortunately, that's only 9%, so that thing's going to fall apart. Yeah, I don't I don't know if guns are good in uh, in astronauts. I've only ever picked one up once, and I've never actually fired one, so I don't know if they're any good. I hope they are. But we don't even have any ammunition for the gun, so... And let's access the inventory, and holy crap, there's a spear. Okay. Um... It's 91%. Uh... I think we can only carry it. Well, that's unfortunate. I was gonna go frickin', um... Never mind. I was gonna make a Dynasty Warriors joke and then I forgot the character's name.
Yeah, that's that's always, I think, been one of the major concerns about bringing firearms into space is the, hey, by the way, you don't even necessarily have to hit something like the overpressure from a powerful enough round could be enough to compromise um, to compromise the integrity of a habitat module. But nobody thinks about that. Can I, can I get over here? Thank you. All right, uh, so let's drop this bed on the ground and then we're going to restore it so that we've actually got a place to sleep if we need to. I say that and then unfortunately we don't actually have enough space to lay out this bed, so for really good it does. Um, yeah, and I think we head back to Kaleg at this point. And I tell you what, one other thing that I'm going to do before we go back to Kaleg is I'm going to set my zones properly this time. Uh, so we will set this zone, add a zone. Um, I'm going to set this zone, add a zone. Nope, try again. Nope, try again. There we go. Add a zone. And I think we just do this number here. Yeah, add a zone. Screw it. I'll put one right here too. Add a zone. So now we got a bunch of zones, but we're going to make them all barter zones. And now... We GTFO. Oh, okay. I see. That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, personally, I have not played Starfield, and I probably won't, just because I don't know if my machine could handle it, but uh, I've certainly watched plenty of people playing it, and I have not noticed that. Although I did think those, like, the Zero Z combat sections were actually pretty cool. Because you don't, you don't see a lot of games that do that, and if they do, they do it like Call of Duty, where there's almost no consideration given for how combat like that would work in a vacuum. I'm looking at you, Call of Duty Ghosts. I still remember. Most of the kids these days don't even know that Call of Duty Ghosts exist, but I remember. Yeah, I've heard that there were a lot of issues, though, with, um... At least at launch, that there were a lot of issues with, like, optimization. And, um like texture resolutions and stuff not working properly and and a lot of that and i don't know how much of that was true and how much of it was just you know that oh it's a brand new game we have to bash on it because that was one thing that i noticed pretty early on was the Everybody jumping on the hate train for basically no other reason than to get rage clicks. And and I I've had my own criticisms of Starfield, but at the same time, it's a Bethesda game and if you went in expecting anything else, then your disappointment is on you. Like, for better or worse, it is... It is exactly what I expected from a Bethesda product. So I'm just organizing my small parts like I said I was going to, and then never actually got around to doing. And then, uh, we do have pills. I think I'm just gonna sell all these pill bottles, because if we never get in combat, then we don't have to worry about... Uh, antibiotics and things like that.
Yeah, it's, I mean, from the people that I watched play it, um, it, it's one of those games where I, I told myself, you know, this is a game that I wouldn't mind playing, but at the same time, I think I'm just going to wait a little while. Uh, I think I'll probably give it a year, let some DLC come out, let some patches hit, let the, the optimization set in, and then, you know, like holiday sale next year, it'll be on sale for like 20 bucks, and then I'll pick it up. Not to mention, I prefer to rent a lot of mods on my Bethesda games, because... Again, no offense to Bethesda, but they're not super imaginative in terms of the depth of their storytelling. So mods can really elevate that. And so I figure in a year or so, not only will a game be in a better state, but all the good mods and stuff will also finally be stable and running as intended. And uh, I, I think it'll just be a better experience overall. I'm doing dumb things here. I really should be slowing down, and I'm busy trying to adjust course. Thank you. Yes, I know. We're, we're, we're having a proximity warning. There we go. But yeah, I, uh, I think the game that broke me of the whole buying a game as soon as it comes out and all that was Cyberpunk, because I was so friggin' hyped for Cyberpunk when it came out in 2020. And I was one of the unfortunate souls that ended up buying the PS4 version. And after a decade or more of essentially being screwed over by pre-orders and buggy launches and things like that, I just, like, I kind of took a step back and I said, you know what? I don't think I'm going to buy games at launch anymore. I think I may, you know, at the very least, I may wait at least a few days or weeks and see what the general consensus is. Because the first day that Starfield came out, everybody was gushing about it. It's the best game ever made. Oh my god, 10 out of 10. The greatest game that Bethesda has ever produced. And then within about a week, you started to see, you know, the hate videos come out where everybody was talking about, oh, the game is terrible and it's actually really bad. And, and then, a little bit after that, you started to see the more nuanced takes and the more legitimate criticisms, um, as opposed to just the super hype fanboys or the super angry, salty people who just didn't like it because, oh no, it didn't release on PlayStation. So yeah, I've, I, I've sort of just given up on the whole thing internet hype machine at this point. Alright, here we go. So 3k for the helium canister. That's not too bad. Ah, uh, we got the hydras. Ah, oh, looks like they've decreased the, the value on those. Those used to be worth a little bit more, but I'll still take 15k. I'm not going to complain about that. And then we got quite a few batteries. I think I'll sell one or two. Well, no, they're not even worth that much money. Never mind. I could sell one of the EVAs, though. Don't know if it's worth it. Well, let's see. Which one? So that one has O2 and a battery. This one has O2 and a battery. Okay. Oh, no, never mind. That's the other one. So I'll sell this one. All right. Accept. And that's 36k in our pocket, which brings us up to just a little over 40. Uh, so I'm going to do that thing that I said I was going to do. And uh, I'm going to buy a freaking crowbar. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I, I've also kind of mused often that the quality of the AAA space is going down as years go on. Um, but I think that's just a symptom of a much larger problem, which I'm not going to go into because it's bordering on politics and I have very staunch no politics rules in the channel. But, um, yeah, I, I agree that 
the the AAA space is not in a great place these days. At least it feels Whoa. like it to me. It's it's not where it was, say, ten years ago or fifteen years ago. All right. Now, if I remember right, when you buy the new tool, it doesn't actually come with a battery. I could be wrong. Does it? Can I have the inventory? Show me the inventory for the drill, please. There we go. Oh, no, it does have a battery now. Nice. All right, so that'll replace our screwdriver. Um, and then I kind of want to buy a grinder to replace the saw. Heh. <laughs> And I did buy some extra batteries so that we can have them in the chargers. Uh, clip point, I think. Oh, no, crap. I can't do that either. So I guess we're going to have to put this in here. Man, inventory management. It's a bitch. And the whole time we're here, we're, we're burning money. Alright. Now, get into the backpack. Missile the nightstick. Uh, you know, I think I... <laughs> the, I'm gonna keep the gun. The gun only takes up one slot. And it could potentially be cool if we find some ammo for it. So we're selling that, selling the screwdriver. I guess, yeah, I'm gonna sell the freaking hacksaw and I guess I'll buy a grinder instead. I really should just save up for a laser torch, but screw it. All right. Back to the supply station. And we are gonna buy the grinder. It's only 200 bucks. It's not a huge expenditure. Not compared to the, the however many grand, the 20 grand it is for the laser torch. Which we could technically afford, but again, I'm trying to save. So we'll put the grinder in here. Um. Put the crowbar in here. Drop this battery on the ground and we'll do a restore on it. No. There we go. Restore the battery. Okay. And I think we're in good shape now. So, gun goes in the pouch. I'll put the drink in here. Put the PDA in here just so we've got it on us. And, oh yeah, we need to put the batteries in the chargers and then we can head out. There we go. All right, let's pay those dues. And we'll hit the boneyard again. Uh, always want to restock on power, especially now that we have a new battery. Uh, I guess we can refill with the RCS as well. And that's it. All of our fees are paid. We are free and clear. Yeah, so I've heard a lot of criticisms of Elite Dangerous, but being perfectly honest, I I don't have many criticisms of Elite for what it is, because there's one major competitor that I think takes the cake in terms of deserving of criticism, and that's Star Citizen. It's, I could say a lot of very not nice things about Star Citizen, but I think Elite... While it does have some scope problems, I think they've done a pretty good job of delivering on what's there. Like, what they have in the game is good, and it feels 
fun to play if you enjoy those type of things. I know there's a lot of people that complain about Elite because it doesn't deliver exactly the kind of space sim experience that they want. But I don't think that's a failing of the game. I think that's just people expecting a game to do something that they never said they were going to do. Oh yeah, no, Chris Roberts... Chris Roberts has been talking out his ass for 20 years, all, going all the way back to Freelancer. Like, he, he is just a younger version of Peter Molyneux, a, a guy who has almost limitless ambition, but doesn't have the skills to get where his ambition says he's going to get. Like, he's, he's an ideas guy. And he comes up with some really good ideas, but those ideas are divorced from what it actually takes to make those ideas happen. And and again, that's that's very much in line with Peter Molyneux, where like he comes up with these really cool sounding ideas, but then when it comes time to actually implement them in terms of a game development perspective, it, it just never happens. Because either the thing that he's asking for isn't possible in the current generation, or his budget will not allow him to do whatever it is that he says he's going to do. And yeah, Chris is the same way. He, he's, he's got, you know, sky's the limit. Hats off to the guy, because he, he has big, big, big plans, but doesn't have the faintest idea about how to get where he wants to be in terms of where Star Citizen is. I mean, they've redone their entire game engine from scratch, like, what, three times now or something like that on Star Citizen? So, if that's, if that's not an indicator of something wrong at the top levels, I don't know what is. So we are docked with The Point is Moot, which is another freighter. And you know what? The last freighter we docked with was pretty good. Pretty good. So hopefully this one will be too. Uh, let's have a look at the backpack. I'm, I'm interested to see. Okay, so we haven't lost much condition. I think we're in good, in good shape. We're in a good spot. So let's go. Let's see what The Point is Moot has for us. So right away, I'm going to grab this. I, I like having myself a, a few extra motherboards because you never know when you're going to need them. Uh, and it looks like we got another door. But hey, guess what? We can bash this sucker down now. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Stop. 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 going to friggin' kill yourself over here trying to bash down a door. We'll just scrap it instead. I mean, for me, the Star Citizen thing, th when I heard that they were selling ships that didn't exist and hadn't even been implemented in the game for literal thousands of dollars, that was the point where I kind of checked out on Star Citizen. I said, if you guys are going to, to sell nonsense and sell nonsense when you know it doesn't exist and you don't even know how to implement it yet, like, nah, sorry, that's, that's where I got to draw the line. And all of a sudden, we are finding crazy stuff. We got an EVA suit. We just found two handguns. Man, was this like a military or a police ship or something? We got a drill, a pack of cigarettes, which... I think it's kind of funny, this is exactly what happens when you play astronauts sometimes. Like, I just spent money to buy a drill, and now I find a drill that's in almost perfect condition in the very first derelict like, that we arrive at. Because if the universe is a dice game, I'm rolling snake eyes. All day, every day. All right, we're getting the hypercapnia, and I think this is actually very similar to one of the other derelicts that we visited when we first started. Um, we got jumpsuits. That doesn't look like a motherboard. Got shirts. 
Okay, before we get too much deeper, if we're having hypercapnia, let's just go ahead and get some more O2 now. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. That's that's another one of those things where I was like, how is it that you guys are talking about implementing all of this like super high concept stuff and you can't even get the basics right? Like, we, we had working inventory systems in video games in 1992. So for you guys to be struggling with it this much is a little bit concerning. Alright, we'll do this. There we go. And drop the motherboard on the ground. Actually, you know what? Now, I keep saying it. Organization is key. So we're going to go put the motherboard in the box where it goes. A place for everything and everything in its place. Man, we really, really need to start fixing up this ship if we're going to be here long term. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember that part where I said I don't pay attention? Because I just walk out of the ship without a helmet on. Oops. Hopefully Alvin will forgive me for my error. He didn't die, so it could have worked out much, much worse. More food. Oh, wait a minute. I just saw pills. Nope, empty pill bottle. Uh, maybe some sake? What do we get? Is there anything in it? It's water. Why are there so many booze bottles in space that don't have booze in them? There we go. We have a vodka bottle with actual vodka inside. Hallelujah. Uh, tasks. Yes, I know I told you to do that, but don't actually do that. Yeah. Oh, well, all right. So, um, we've got a door that's actually intact here. Uh, oh, this is the bathroom. Well, now I feel dumb. Toothbrush, again. Hydrocodone pills. I mean, I happen to know, for reasons that I won't get into, that painkillers like hydrocodone, usually, have a huge aftermarket on them. I don't know if that's true in this particular version of space. Nothing. T-shirt, 99 gold, okay. And what do we get? I got coffee in a liquor bottle. Man, people, people just be reusing liquor bottles all the time in space, apparently. So wait a minute. Am I... Am I taking crazy pills? So there's a drink pouch and a bottle of rice wine that has coffee in it. Then when I open this bin, there's a drink pouch and a bottle of rice wine that has coffee in it. So there's two bins that have the exact same contents for whatever reason. Nausea pills, why not? Ah, this is... Oh, look. Nausea pills, but they put mechanical parts in the box. And we are starting to, to be affected by hypercapnia. But I want to check the bins on this side of the ship, so that way when we come back in, we can just focus on the other side of the ship. Oh, well, maybe not. We got another door to bust into. Screw it. We're gonna break in. I guess that's fair. I just... Based on the amount of money that they give you for this liquor and the amount of money that they ask for it in return, I, I never got the impression that this was, like, pricey liquor with a cork on it. It always just seemed like it was... Oh, tactical knife. 
It always just seemed like it was more of the cheap plastic bottle with the screw-on lid kind of thing. Maybe that was just me being wrong about it, but that's the impression I got. But yeah, I could see the value in, um... I could see the value in any kind of airtight liquid container in space. Especially something as common as liquor would be... would be very popular for being reusable, I would imagine. All right. Now let's check the other side of the ship and see what we've got. Honestly, I think the appeal of of a game like this, at least for me, just just thinking like long term, is it really kind of has that loot box mentality to it where every ship is another chance to find really cool stuff and you never know what you're going to get. But unlike games that actually have loot boxes and stuff in them, I don't have to spend money in order to take a spin on the roulette wheel. I just have to go find another ship. Shift in in five minutes. Well, can I... I was about to say, uh, let's pay our dues. Oh yeah? Okay. I, wait, wait. What? Where the heck do you live where there's a minimum price on booze? I mean, obviously you don't have to answer that, but like, I've never heard of that before. Oh, this is, uh, this is where the reactor room was on the other one. I mean, I've said before that I live in Texas where you can't buy liquor on a Sunday because... reasons. Like, you can't even go to the convenience store and buy a beer. Because... I, I don't know. Christian sensibilities, that's the best I can come up with. So even though this door, oh, it's locked, I was going to say, dang it. So now I have to uninstall. Ah, you know, there's, there's a point there. Uh, I myself struggled with alcoholism for many years, and uh, I can say that I definitely preferred the good stuff over the bad stuff, but... When your ultimate objective is just to get as hosed as possible, sometimes you just don't care. Alright, well, like, did we check this floor bin? We did, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's about it. Don't think there's anything that we didn't check yet. So, yeah. Our boy is complaining about hypercapnia, so I think now's a great time to get out of here. Oh, Scotland, okay. Look, I, I don't know if you were here for it, but I explained once before that... Um, English, Scottish, Irish, any, any sort of British accent has a certain effect on people from the South here in the U.S. Uh, if you've never experienced it, I, I'm just, like, giving you a heads up, like, there's a certain amount of K-Kona that, that gets thrown around anytime uh, someone pops in. And Scottish accent especially. I, I don't know what it is about the Scottish accent. Look, I don't... Where is our boy going here? What are you doing? Oh, you're going to get a rag. I, I told him to restore a, a knife and he goes to get a rag to do it. Don't ask me how that makes any kind of sense. But whatever. I 
also need to double check the setting here because I have you. Oh, that's why. Yeah, you're supposed to not open airlocks. So I don't know why this goofball keeps trying to walk out into vacuum to pick up parts. I specifically have him. Uh, I specifically have him set to not walk through airlocks without a helmet on. Oh, well. I mean, I, I can never think of, of the Scottish people without immediately thinking of Sean Tannery and his every accent is a Scottish accent approach to acting. There was just something about that. Like, that that takes a certain amount of balls to just be like, Russian sub-captain? Scottish accent. British spy? Scottish accent. English gentleman hunter? Scottish accent. Spanish guy? Immortal Spanish guy that learned to wield the katana in Japan? Scottish accent. That's fair. I, I mean, I guess, I guess that's kind of where he got that mentality from, is the, well, I'm not going to do an accent badly, so if I can't do one, I'm just not going to do it at all. As opposed to, you know, certain other actors and actresses, I'm looking at you, Halle Berry, and your whatever the hell that accent in X-Men was supposed to be. Which, to be fair, I'm glad she dropped that in the second and third movie, because I was like, what? What are you doing right now? All right. And then this was, I think this was, yeah, this was the new EVA suit that we picked up. I don't even know. No, 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 no. Don't dismantle the EVA suit. Restore the EVA suit. Was he Spanish? I I what I could swear he was like Dutch or something like that in Highlander. Um, I can never remember the guy's name, but the guy that played McLeod. And if I remember right, right, yeah, 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 Christopher Lambert was his name. If I remember right, I read somewhere that like he didn't even speak English when. He was filming Highlander, and they basically had to feed him all his lines. I don't know how much truth there is to that. But I do remember hearing it more than once. So I just realized that we have a CO2 sensor on our ship. But for whatever reason, ah... Uh, it's broken, so I figured I would repair it, and then our man's here, even though I have specifically told him not to just walk out the door, proceeded to then attempt to walk out the door. I mean, I, I'm just, I just, to be fair, 1980s, like Christopher Lambert, circa 1980s, I probably would have hit that with or without the glasses, I'm just saying. The man had it going on. Alright, so I think we've gotten just about all that we can get. So, time to move on to the next wreck. <laughs>